didn't see it. <laughs> Were any of you guys friends before the show? No. no. I think you'll be friends after. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump loves reality television. Is he begging to come on your show? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no. Would you take him on? We'd have to have a very long conversation before we agreed to that, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, I, you know, go ahead. Me personally, I, uh, I would. I w- it wouldn't be to make over his wardrobe. I couldn't care less about what he's playing on his body. And it's perfect. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Just because I meet with someone doesn't mean I have to support your political views. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. I think he w- it would be impactful mm-hmm. for our diverse views to just have a lunch date with him. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. It's not going to hurt us. No, I, I, and it can only I, I, maybe well, help. We, we've never talked about this off camera either, but I, 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 you see on um, like Twitter when a, a famous person will meet with uh, Trump we like chast- Kardashian recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. we chastise him for it, saying, how dare you support him? And I just think, wait, the more we expose right. the, who we are to him, yeah. the, the less uh, Republican uh, dudes he's hang out with, maybe. But I, uh, you may disagree, but this is my opinion. I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, what do you think? I, I, well, I think it's... Um, I think that there is a very careful line that you have to walk because I understand what you guys are saying. And I think that when he was inaugurated, I would have been on that train too. But a lot of people have tried to humanize themselves in front of him. And he's methodically worked uh, on ways to make sure that we can't access healthcare in a way that we could. He's also done a lot of work to sow disinformation um, and really hurt people. So I think, you know, a year ago I would have been on that train. Um, but kind of like what you were saying, like I would need um, a lot of assurances that he was willing to have a conversation. Conversation. And for me, unfortunately, actions speak a lot louder than words. And I can't really, um, I can't normalize that behavior because I think it's dangerous. But we, but we know, so out of the five of us, I actually have been to the White House recently and have met with the vice president's um, wife's chief of staff. And everyone in there said, you cannot bring up the fact that you're gay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, wow. I, it was consistently told to me as I was going in there to meet with the vice president. Did you challenge them on that? I, I, I said nothing to them, but the minute I walked in the room, I brought up the fact that art is important, but we also need to talk about how art therapy works with the LGBT community as a gay man. And everyone's face did this. Did mother clutch Whoa. her pearls? But, <laughs> but for me, keeping us out of the room is all I'm saying is not but I don't going think, to help. But, but to me, he's, you know, not, he's not keeping us out of a room because I think there's other rooms that are having much more productive conversations and I'm not going to bring my hard work and my identity to someone that I know will not appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. But I really respond to you doing that yeah. and I think that that's good of you. But for me... Um, that is just, especially with the HIV stuff, uh, his administration is just one that I cannot engage in because I think that he is um, you know, truly a public health threat. And I need to have those conversations with people who are you know, in uh, the command room trying to have a real conversation. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that they are. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you guys realize, uh, I know you're a big fan of the avocado. Is that true? <laughs> I I like that. For the record, I actually like cheese a lot more. (laughs) Especially halloumi. (laughs) I love halloumi. I love a squeaky, crispy halloumi off a pan. But I certainly, the love that has been displayed via the social media is is not as strong as like what it actually is. But I do really appreciate it. Very much. I'm itching to say something really quick. I'm just itching. I can't. I just can't let it go. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I really want Karamo to be like President Brown or Senator Brown or um, so for like for you he you need to be able to have conversations with people that are so well, strong. Some people side. in the room, some people out of the room. hundred percent. And yeah. so and I do not think that you are like normalizing really bad behavior. I think someone has to roll up their sleeves and do that work. That's just not my role. Yeah. No, but I respect you for having yours. It kind of touches on like the two ways of like, sometimes it's yeah. about sort of like preaching and being like, hey, I need you to hear me. And other times it's just about listening. It's like, and I feel like you guys are speaking about those two different things and those can <coughs> exist in the same world. I agree, I agree. The reason I brought up the avocado. Yes, back to, back to the pressing question. question. I want to I'm so really sorry. Actually, I actually we the avocado stuff? because yeah. maybe we should bring a a basket of avocados <laughs> to the administration. Is that what we want to do? I think that's where this is going. Exactly. No, the avocado here has become a political football. It's been a, a something that's divided generations here in Australia because a columnist Because of the price, said, right, or something? Well, the, a columnist said, young people should stop having so much smashed avocado on toast. 
save the money so then yeah, they can afford yeah, to yeah. buy we a house that. Yeah, we and it pissed that. off a whole generation mm-hmm. and a well, whole yeah. bunch of wow. avocado lovers. That's a lot of, that's a lot of avocado not to eat to get a dang house. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. Yeah, said and that. how many avocados are you eating where that actually affects the I possibility Although, of you getting a mortgage? It's like moderation. But that like, is a general, I think that is like a generational thing that we don't uh, quite have the same understanding of uh, like with people in generations ahead of us, especially yeah. like my grandma whose name was like literally Ann Oakley, not by birth. <laughs> <laughs> she married my grandfather whose last name was Oakley, so her name was like literally Ann Oakley, but I remember uh, I would buy, I like love like those big bottles of water. Yeah. And I remember she would say to me all the time, like, hmm, I wonder like what all those bottled waters add up to at the end of the year. Like maybe you would stop needing to call like your grandma and grandpa for $300 if you stopped <laughs> in June. So I do think that there is a thing about that generation because they did go through the Great Depression and there yeah. was like, and, and also, uh, I do think that in, in this digital age, like no one ever has cash. Like I very much struggle with like what, a dollar is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. So it is annoying, yeah, and, I, and and my, my first thought is like, <laughs> sawed off, I'm gonna have all the smashed avocado I want. <laughs> um, but I do think that there is like a generation that had it so much harder than us, that's probably why they're talking, and that, coming from and that And you know the thing is, I believe that divisive type of antidote is not going to help the next generation that you're trying to, I, I can understand the intention behind that statement. Yeah. It was, I'm trying to teach you the value of money and how- and discipline. Uh, yeah, and discipline and creating wealth for yourself. But through shame. But through shame. Yeah. That doesn't work. And I think that's something that we really need to check ourselves with. And I, I just I just would encourage generations that are older than us to realize that, and for us as we get older, with the next generation of understanding that people have a way of approaching life. Yeah. And if we want to help them like we do on this show, it's meeting them where they're at and helping them learn how they can grow from that space it's, instead of shaming them. Yeah, and, it's educating them, not preaching it. Yeah. On our show when we Thanks walk in with place. Thanks for answering the avocado question for me. <laughs> but also monounsaturated <laughs> fats are good for you. You should have it twice a week. <laughs> oh no, that's, but, but that's a thing. Yeah, Say that again. Thing. Let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah. No, but it's true. It's yeah. like, I don't know, like just don't, uh, anything that's like too extreme always tends to like make me uncomfortable. Mm. And just like, even the Which obsession you love me so much. <laughs> <laughs> and me. <laughs> but like just the obsession with it. It's just like, just chill out. Have an avocado twice a week. It'll make you enjoy it more than if you have it every single day. Mm. I love having an entire block of cheese by myself. But if I have it every day, I'm going to get fat and I'm not going to like it as much because I'm going to be flooded with the sensation of it. So what do I do? I have it once a week and then I get to enjoy it a lot more. Incredible life That's, advice. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to us, guys. It's of been course. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, you. For having Thank us. you. Thank you. Awesome. I realize who he kind of looks like. You kind of look like Superman in episode eight of season one.